Okay, in the next couple of videos, I'm going to talk about canonical correlation and how you can run um, this type of analysis using SPSS. And uh, we'll also do a little bit of interpretation of uh, some output. Um, the data set that you have right here is uh, essentially um, simulated data based on the uh, summary matrix data that is provided in um, this uh, article right here. It's by Sherry et al. from 2007. And um, essentially the authors were looking at the relationship between uh, attachment style and personality styles. So um, basically uh, what we have right here, uh, table one, we have a correlation matrix along with means and standard deviations. And uh, essentially I just simulated, uh, created simulated data for these nine variables. Um, so uh, what you have right here, variables one through four are attachment style variables. And uh, then you have um, uh, variables five through nine as being personality style variables. Um, so again, the basic idea behind uh, this particular study was that the authors were uh, studying whether uh, there was a relationship between uh, different you know, attachment styles uh, that, that individuals have and uh, the personality uh, styles later on. So they collected data from about, um, well they had usable data from about 273 uh, students and um, on uh, each of these variables and uh, basically they carried out a canonical correlation. Um, we are not utilizing the full set of data here so um, this is not going to be a pure replication of uh, this, their study uh, because we don't actually have variables 10 through 14 in our data set but um, this is workable uh, for, the, for our purposes. So you'll notice that uh, right here in the data set we've got variables preoccupied uh, through secure and so these are attachment styles and um, then uh, these variables over here are uh, essentially our personality style variables. So with canonical correlation the basic idea is we are interested in relating two sets of variables together. So uh, in one set of variables we've got um, you know we have four attachment style variables um, right here and then we're going to be relating it uh, relating them to personality styles. So we have five of those variables over here. And um, so, and that's essentially the, the idea behind canonical correlation is you're trying to study the relationship between two sets of variables. The way that this is done is by, um, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, invoking some similar processes that we see in the context of principal components analysis. Um, and what happens is is that we derive from these uh, original sets of measured variables, we derive uh, synthetic or latent variables called canonical uh, variants. So um, you know, we'll have uh, CV1 and CV1 right here. And basically these uh, synthetic variables summarize portions of, of the variation in the original set of measured variables. The derivation of the first set of canonical variates is such that it maximizes the relationship between those two. So we're deriving latent variables that are uh, maximally related between the two sets. Now the number of canonical variate pairs that are derived uh, is actually equal to uh, the smaller, the number um, uh, in, of the smaller set of variables. So we had four variables in the first set and five variables in the second set. So technically speaking there would be uh, four pairs of canonical variates that uh, can be derived and, and related to each other. So there's uh, canonical variate pair two right here. We have canonical variate pair three. I'll just say three, CV3 right here, CV3 right here. And, um, and then uh, CV4. Okay, so the basic idea then is we want to relate these two ver uh, these um, pairs of canonical variates together. And so uh, the way that we look at that relationship is through the process of uh, correlating them. So the canonical correlation is literally the correlation between uh, canonical variates um, for each pair. And um, you know the the canonical correlations uh, that are um, that are computed uh, on each uh, 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 canonical variant pair um, 
basically uh, the first one is going to be the largest, uh, the second one will be the next largest, and so forth. So in, in other words, the canonical correlations are going to be descending in magnitude for each variant pair that is um, extracted. Um, so the basic idea behind the, the procedure is is that um, what we do is we you know we kind of extract uh, you know all of our uh, uh, pairs of canonical variates and relate them to each other and then we really try to identify uh, you know which um, of of the relationships help to explain the overall relationship at this level. So for instance, let's say that um, you know this first uh, pair is significant, this one is significant. And let's say that these other two. Um, uh, canonical correlations are not significantly related or they don't have a, a very much overlap, then in that case we can sort of prune those out and then we can just study uh, the relationships between these two um, variable sets or these uh, two uh, pairs of uh, canonical variants. Now once you've identified um, how many um, uh, uh, pairs that you want to relate to each other and you want to study that relationship using the canonical correlation, then you also want to give the canonical variants a, uh, a name and give them some kind of meaning. So just talking about canonical variants being related is, is pretty uninformative. Um, so we end up uh, describing what the canonical variant, uh, variants are in each set from each set. And then we can, when, we, when we study the canonical correlation, then we can talk about relationships in, in, more of a, in terms of kind of relationships between constructs. So uh, the basic idea is, is that we study the relationship between um, our canonical uh, variants and the measured variables um, that they were derived from. And uh, so in, in a nutshell, it's very similar to the process that, that plays out in the context of components analysis, uh, where essentially we look at the relationship between the original set of measured variables and the canonical variants and we give these uh, variants meaning and then we can when we interpret the canonical correlation we can talk in terms of like I said constructs as opposed to just referring to uh, you know canonical variants. So in SPSS the way that we we, we perform the analysis um, also one other thing to note too is that the canonical variants that are derived um, are uh, uncorrelated with each other. So that's the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that you know all pairs of canonical variants that are derived uh, within each set right here, they're going to explain um, a, a cumulative percentage of variation in the original set of measured variables. So that is something else to uh, briefly note. But in SPSS, the way that we carry out our analysis, we cannot use uh, the menu-driven system as um, typically laid out for a lot of other procedures. So we do have to use syntax, and so um, we can use go to File, New, and create, open up a syntax file, and so blank file. And I'm just going to um, paste in some syntax uh, for our analysis, for our demonstration. So you'll notice <coughs> that um, the syntax is laid out. It's using a MANOVA command. Now we're not actually carrying out a MANOVA, but we're using this um, uh, as a command. And then you'll notice that we've got the names of all the variables from one set, and then followed by a width, and then the name of the variables from the second set of variables. So the way this is kind of laid out, we're, we're kind of treating these variables as dependent variables, and these variables as kind of independent or predictor variables. Keeping in mind, too, that we are simply studying a correlational structure, so this doesn't speak to anything along the lines of uh, causality or anything of that nature. But you'll notice that we've got, uh, for this second line, after we have our uh, variables typed in, um, you know, we, uh, we uh, have a backslash to scrim and then uh, the rest of this here. Um, so at any rate, you'll notice that we have a print line down here printing out significance levels, uh, eigenvalues, and so forth. And then uh, we're ending it with a period. If you don't have a period in there, uh, then that little MANOVA will be appear in red. Um, and so that's going to tell you that you're going to end up with an error message if you run the analysis that way. So I'm going to put the period in there, and um, there you go. So now it's highlighted in, bl in blue. So to run the analysis, I'm going to highlight this and click on the green button. And so here's our output. And so you'll notice, uh, in terms of our output, we've got, um, first of all, we've got 
uh, a basic MANOVA. And if you look at the Wilkes uh, um, test right here, this is basically a test of the relationship between the two sets of, of variables. So, um, you know, if this is statistically significant, then that's basically telling us that, the, that there's a significant relationship between the variable sets. <clears throat> now, we can go a little bit further, and down here under root number, these are basically referring to each pair of canonical variants. So, uh, root 1 is re referring to the first pair of canonical variants, root 2 is the second set, and so forth. You'll notice over here where it says canonical correlation, this is um, essentially um, you know, basically the Pearson's correlation between the, uh, the two canonical variates in the first uh, set. Um, and so it's 0.89, and we can also square that and talk about the proportion of variates that's shared between the two uh, canonical variates, which is about 79%. The second um, uh, canonical correlation is 0.368, uh, and you can see right here that the, the, those two, uh, the second set of um, canonical variance is sharing roughly 14% variation. Now you can see for the third and the fourth one, these are low correlations, and you can see that they're sharing very little uh, common variation. So these are definitely candidates for uh, exclusion or removal when it comes to uh, talking about um, our final model. Um, if you look down here under re dim dimension reduction analysis, we can go a little bit further in talking about which um, uh, canonical variant pairs we want to study by um, uh, with uh, these tests right here, and this is pretty much analogous to what's, what occurs in the context of discriminant analysis. Um, so in this particular case right here, um, you know we have the first set. I'm just going to call this one, uh, then two for the second set, the third set, and then the fourth set of canonical variants. And so remember that, um, and so the way that this procedure um, uh, works is through kind of a peel-off procedure. So basically what happens is, is that the first uh, test right here says roots one to four. So in other words, it's kind of an, it's basically an omnibus test of the relationship between the first set of canonical variates and the second set. Um, so you'll notice that unsurprisingly, uh, the Wilkes lambda, the F value uh, significance level is exactly the same as what you had up here in the MANOVA summary table. Um, so what happens is, is that, so when you're testing, the first test is a test of all of the relationships. It's not just a test of the first one, but uh, uh, the relationship between the first set of canonical variants, but all of them. The second test basically involves peeling this off and essentially looking at the relationship uh, for uh, between the variable sets for uh, uh, based on the um, second through fourth uh, pairs of canonical variants. So you can see right here that this was significant. So what that tells us then is that you know thus far you know we have evidence that at least uh, the first um, uh, pair of canonical variants is related. The fact that the second test is significant lets us know that at a minimum the second pair of canonical variants uh, are related to each other but we don't necessarily know that the third and fourth are are, are not related so um, if we go to the next test we peel off um, the previous two um, relationships and now um, we're testing uh, um, uh, the third and fourth canonical variant pairs and you can see that this is not significant so that's actually telling us then that um, at this point there's no need to go further but you can see right here for the fourth which would be a peel off uh, of all of the previous uh, variant pairs and leaving just the last one that was not significant so based on these results you can see then that really we want to concentrate on interpreting uh, these relationships here so when we scroll down uh, a little bit further you'll notice that we have um, various uh, loading uh, matrices and so you can see that we've got raw canonical uh, coefficients for the dependent variables. So the dependent variables in our analysis which were on the left side of our width statement and the syntax were uh, the personality variables and so these are all essentially unstandardized uh, coefficients pretty much analogous to unstandardized regression coefficients. These are standardized coefficients um, 
that, that you have uh, in this table, which are analogous to the, uh, the, the beta weights or the standardized uh, regression coefficients in regression. And, um, and then the third, you have essentially correlations between these variables and, um, and um, each of the canonical variates uh, from this set of, uh, that are uh, extracted from this set of variables. So uh, essentially, these are, this is basically a structure matrix right here. So a structure matrix just reflects the correlations between um, our uh, measured variables and uh, the canonical variates. Uh, and it's pretty much analogous to uh, the structure matrix in the context of components analysis. So uh, what we essentially do is we study the relationship between our measured variables and uh, the, the uh, canonical variates so that we can give those canonical variates meaning. Now remember that we've already determined that uh, variate, canonical variate pairs 3 and 4 are irrelevant. So we can pretty much just ignore uh, the loadings in these, two, um, in these two columns here and just try to interpret uh, the first set. And by the way, um, this is for the dependent variables. Our predict uh, the um, the coefficients for the predictors are down below. So we'll kind of talk about that uh, shortly. So you know, kind of go. So what we're going to mainly concentrate on are the uh, structure matrix. And so in naming uh, and describing um, our canonical variates from uh, from um, in this particular part of the, the uh, output, you'll notice that uh, these are correlations, and so you can see that the, the uh, dependent personality style variable is uh, positively correlated with uh, the first canonical variant. Uh, you also see uh, the schizotypical also correlated positively, but it's on the low side, and then the histrionic is kind of correlated, uh, is negatively correlated at a lower level. Um, now, in order to give this uh, variate meaning, you have to kind of know what these variables are. And I am not an expert in this area, so I'm kind of doing the best I can given that fact. So if you'll bear with me, I'm just going to uh, take a stab at it. Um, you know, the dependent personality style just basically reflects a uh, tendency towards uh, having a psychological dependency on others. And um, so that, you know, that. So, um, you know, based on this loading right here, you, it, it kind of makes sense that, um, um, you know, you have a higher loading on this. And then you see the negative loading for histrionic. And histrionic personality style, really based on the description in the article, is that, uh, you know, persons with this style tend to be more dramatic, outgoing, friendly, or gregarious. So it kind of stands to reason why this, co this loading would be negative and this one would be positive. Um, so... Um, and, and, and when you look at the second variant, you'll notice that, um, you know, the schizotypical is loading positively on, on this and then uh, negatively, uh, uh, our histrionic is loading negatively on uh, the second variant. And so uh, just kind of, you know, keeping in mind, um, uh, based on the description of, of schizotypical, uh, and I'm going to read from the article because I, I really don't uh, study this at all. Uh, basically, these individuals tend to be more socially detached, um, estranged from themselves in the form of depersonalization or derealization, experience intense social anxiety and apprehension. So it kind of stands to reason then that uh, if you're scoring higher if, um, on schizotyp uh, sch schizotypical um, personality traits, uh, that that might be um, negatively related to sort of the histrionic. So we might consider... Uh, the variant to something along the lines of a, um, a social isolation um, variable um, and uh, the first one being something more along the lines of sort of dependent traits. Um, if we want to study more in depth, uh, you know, which variables are most uniquely contributing uh, to the canonical variance, you can look at uh, these standardized coefficients right here and you can see that, you know, on the first covariate you see that the dependent and schizotypical are both um, pretty pretty highly related uh, to that first uh, variant, um, uh, and then on the second one, you see that the histrionic is actually pretty highly related as well. Uh, given that this coefficient is uh, on the negative side, that would kind of, uh, and this variable, this one right here, that would actually reflect uh, kind of a less histrionic sort of uh, tendencies uh, in terms of the relationship. Um, based on the standardized coefficient. So at any rate, we're going we're gonna to 
again, go with the idea that the first canonical variant is uh, kind of dependent traits. The second one is being more uh, social isol isolationist kind of traits as well. You'll notice that down below you've got variants in the dependent variables as explained by uh, the canonical uh, variables. And so just kind of a breakdown of the uh, proportion of variants accounted for by um, uh, the canonical variants. Uh, now, if we scroll down, you can see that we've got the raw canonical um, co coefficients for the covariates, the standardized canonical coefficients for covariates, and then the correlations for uh, the covariates as well. So you can see in this particular case that we've got, um, you know, uh, preoccupied, dismissive, fearful, and secure uh, attachment styles. And so we're going to start with the structure matrix down here, and the preoccupied um, uh, style um, tendencies as uh, you know pretty strongly positively correlated with um, the first canonical variant in that second pair uh, of um, or that second um, set. Um, and so with preoccupied, just kind of again uh, drawing from the article, uh, they say that uh, you know with this individuals with this style have a sense of personal unworthiness, uh, but a positive evaluation of others. Um, so that's sort of the preoccupied, and then so you can see that um, there's also you know, a little bit of a positive correlation with respect to the fearful um, component uh, as well. So really kind of feeling personally unworthy and so forth. But it's mainly that preoccupied that's really loading uh, highest onto um, this particular uh, canonical uh, variant. Um, you also see that uh, individuals uh, scoring higher on this variant also tend to be less secure in their attachment style. So it's not uh, not really a big surprise. So, you know, kind of going back and thinking about uh, the, the first canonical uh, correlation, there was a pretty high positive cor uh, or pretty strong uh, canonical correlation between the two variable um, uh, uh, canonical variates. Uh, also keep in mind the canonical correlation ranges between 0 and 1. Uh, so there are no negative canonical correlations. So, but the magnitude is interpreted the same way that you would with a standard uh, Pearson's correlation. Um, but so, if you remember our previous, um, you know, canonical variant for the dependent variable, we were, we were calling it something along the lines of dependent traits, and we were relating that to sort of a preoccupied uh, attachment style. So, um, you know, basically. Uh, we would say that you know having a more preoccupied, less secure, um, uh, and more fearful um, attachment style is associated with more dependent traits um, in um, in individuals. Um, if we look at uh, the second canonical variance right uh, right here, you can see you've got uh, you know sort of a, um, a dismissive style um, right here, which is ca basically characterized by a positive. Uh, sense of uh, self-worth, uh, but a low evaluation or basically a mistrust of others. So basically kind of mistrust. And you can see that that is also negatively related to the secure attachment style. And it's also positively kind of, we have a positive uh, component of being fearful as well. So you can see right here, and then it also stands to reason that if you're more uh, kind of dismissive, then you would also um, tend to um, have less of a positive evaluation of others. So, you know, basically we might uh, consider this particular um, canonical variant something along the lines of uh, dismissiveness or something something of that nature. And, um, you know, and then we can relate that back to the, um, the previous um, um, uh, personality styles. I think we had, had described it as sort of a, an isolationist sort of um, personality style. So you could maybe relate that to a dismissiveness type of uh, style here. Like I said, I'm not really, I, I don't have a whole much of a background in this area, so trying to kind of uh, summarize uh, or name the, the, the canonical variance is a little bit tricky because of that. But, um, you know, as we saw before, the canonical correlations indicated significant relationships between the canonical variant pairs, and then you, you know, you could go back and name and describe those variables so that you can give those canonical correlations meaning. Um, furthermore, you know, just kind of looking at the standardized canonical coefficients, um, you can see again the preoccupied is most highly related to the first canonical variant. Uh, the secure uh, style uh, is negatively related. 
uh, and then when you look at the um, uh, the second canonical um, um, variant, you can see that uh, the secure is negatively related to that, and um, you can see uh, preoccupied is actually negatively related as well. So. Um, I'm not going to go again. I'm not going to go too far into this just because I don't know enough about this area to be able to um, um, sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, um, at any rate, that's essentially sort of a breakdown of um, canonical correlation using SPSS. Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot more that can be said, but I'm trying to kind of keep this um, short. Uh, I thought originally that I would be doing. Um, uh, multiple videos, but instead it looks like I just basically covered everything that I wanted to cover in this particular um, video. One thing to note, uh, there's a really nice um, article uh, that was uh, published by the, the authors of this particular um, uh, study, um, or a couple of the authors uh, from this study. It was actually uh, published in Journal of Personality Assessment, um, and um, it's by Alyssa Sherry and Robin Henson. It's called Conducting and Interpreting uh, Canonical Correlation Analysis in Personality Research, a User-Friendly pr uh, Primer. And uh, a lot of the, um, you know, basically a lot of the um, analyses that were discussed in this particular uh, paper right here are kind of, um, uh, are uh, discussed um, in that paper. And you have a lot more details in terms of what you ought to present and so forth. So uh, if you get a chance, um, Get a copy of it. It's a good. It's a good article. So that pretty well concludes this discussion, and I hope you found this useful.